Hello and welcome back and that is right today I want to look at a brand new heatsink for the PS5 now This is a road that we've been down a few times haven't we? I remember six months ago when this system first had storage capability enabled really the only choice you had was one of those a simple M2 SSD heatsink knocking around for about 10 to 15 dollars these are designed for pc chassis with that big old open area there with air running all the way through it and nothing really caging it in but of course with the ps5 as we've discussed at length several times ssd handling inside this is a little different with the m2 ssd living in that little bay there there isn't the same level of air flowing through the system the ps5 is so preoccupied with that negative pressure of pulling air via the front and pushing out the back delivering it into that central fan that although they've clearly made provisions for the m2 ssd bay inside this system let's grab ourselves a screwdriver although they've made provisions for it it has to be said that airflow over that particular module isn't anywhere near as active as we find in a pc system and after the um, announcement and then eventual activation of the storage feature of the PS5 and the ability to install an SSD inside that bay, some brands started thinking. Now, some of them went ahead and released SSDs with heatsinks pre-attached. Your WD Blacks and your Seagate Bicudas had already done that. But those um, heatsinks on those, as good as they are, it has to be said, were not huge changes in at least architecture and design than these cheap little heatings. They had better materials, they used better placement of thermal pads and more like that, but they weren't exactly a huge change in architecture and design to the likes of those 10 and $15 heatings. It was about the materials and the application. Sure, and afterwards we started seeing heat sinks designed for this chassis. The first, of course, being that Sabrent that we talked about here on the channel, the, the current favorite for the channel, it has to be said. Knocking around online now for about $20. This is a panel that covers that whole slot. And then afterwards we started seeing more aggressive ones. We started seeing ones like the Alec gear that we talked about in the channel previously. The lighting does not like this box in the studio, does it? Uh, the Alec gear being a great deal more aggressive Filling that base substantially larger with heating getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Look at the size of that compared to that. Um, so again, this all got really, really aggressive, which brings it forward to now with PNY, who already have, it has to be said, a very impressive SSD for their systems in the CS3140 that we're going to be doing some brand new testing in 2022 with. They've already got an SSD that is highly compatible with the PS5, and now they've got this heat sink and in today's video we're going to look at the design we're going to look at what it does well things that we're not so sure about the installation we're not going to be doing temp testing in this video because temp testing takes a lot of time that will be a follow-up video hopefully within the next few days today's video is looking at the hardware architecture and comparing it against some of the ones we've talked about and then we're doing a temperature video in a few days that's going to be showing off how well it fares in the actual utilization so if you came to this video for the temps maybe hold off in a few days but this video is about the design so it has to be said up until now all I saw was images online from their own website and I know a number of you probably saw that but there's actually a few things that you don't cotton on to on those photos that you don't really know about until you get your hands on this bad boy itself so again the price tag is a little vague right now I'm sure that's going to become a lot clearer as time wears on but you go to their own website, it directs you to lots of places to buy it, but no price tag is mentioned. And if you follow those links, a lot of those websites haven't listed. But the prices that are there seem to put the price somewhere in the mid $20 mark for US guys up to about $32 or $33. So again, it's a pinch more expensive than that Sabrent that we talked about. It's cheaper than the Elect gear. But again, the Sabrent's been in the market for the better part of three to four months. So I would expect it to have a bit more flexible pricing behind it. Now, this uh, external packaging there, very much part of the XLR8 series from PMY, their Gamer series. Again, very similar livery there all the way around. Um, when you do want to install it, there's information there on the back about an installation guide online. There's not a huge amount of content. I've got to say, if we go inside, there's only two items in here. And even then, it's really 1.01 .01 items inside. I will say, if we have a look inside, that that is quite nice to look at. It has to be said, this is 
Probably one of the nicest looking heat sinks for the PS5 I've talked about. Although, let's be realistic, a heat sink like this that's going to be inside this system, you're going to see it when you install it, and then you're going to put that plate back on, aren't you? So you're not really going to look at it. But still, nonetheless, I'm getting massive like F1 vibes from this. This has got very much that kind of McLaren um, F1 car like kind of design and feel to it, that kind of speed look they're going for. I said there was two items inside. There's nothing else in the box. What there is is an extra screw, your M2 screw there inside the box. Now, bear in mind, that is the M2 screw for installing it inside the system if you need a spare screw. That is not the top screw there. It is not the one included with your PS5, the cross, triangle, circle, and square uh, one there. You still have to use the one that your system arrives with there. And I know a number of you have already reported how soft that screw is and started ripping the thread apart a little bit. I'm amazed mine's still in one piece given how many SSDs I've installed in here. But let's have a little look. Um, last thing, and again, this is more for you British uh, people that were born in about the 80s. This smells like going to a branch of Clark's to get school shoes. That smell, you know that smell you can just about hear in your head, that smell? And I know here in your head is weird, but that smell, this is exactly what that smells like. Old, uh, kind of new school shoes. It's a real firm rubber there. It's astoundingly, I think the protection to this heat sink is heftier than the protection to this SSD. Not that these SSDs need that much protection, but I think it's weird that this SSD, this 2TB drive, has got a little bit of plastic there, but this chunk of metal heat sink has phenomenal protection there in that cut foam. And again, we got that screw. Now, the first thing that hit me when I saw this heat sink was, although I absolutely love the top of it, because that is a nice looking heat sink. Let's get that really close to camera. There should be an article linked on NAS Compares in the description. It's gonna have a lot more photography of this item. The first thing that really surprised me is that top bit isn't actually three-dimensional. If we bring it nice and close, it's actually a plate there at the top. There's a layer of plastic that I will be removing during the installation, but as you can see, it's actually a metal heat dissipation plate. It's not plastic, that is metal there on the top, but it doesn't reveal the ridges. The ridges there are a selection of holes there at vent angle. If I bring it around real slowly, hopefully you'll see there that they are um, transparent all the way through there for air to pass through. Now, if we bring that Sabrent heatsink back in there, because again, I said I would compare against it. If we bring that heatsink in, we can see that they've gone for a clearly angular indented design. Now, this is obviously to capture air as it passes through that system. Even the elect gear that we've talked about, look at that. It's got all of those ridges fully exposed there. But this one here, has that metal plate on the top and it intends to capture air through those holes as it passes through it. Now, I've got a few theories why that exists, but again, none of them we can really put our finger on and say it's true. First and foremost, perhaps it is because they don't want this heatsink to protrude up too high. Bear in mind when we've done our original temp testing, we were making sure to keep track of the internal ambient temperature of this device. We wanted to know when the air passed through over the heat sink that was gaining heat, did it make the air warmer in the ambient device or did it not affect things too much that way when heat passed over the heat sink and into that circular fan and then spat out the back that it didn't negatively impact the ambient airflow too much. Now perhaps, and again, I until I do my temp testing, I can't be 100% certain, perhaps, it is um, a PNY making sure that the air passing through it is passing through it, and it has a lower height than the other one. If we bring it down, we can see that between the two of them, it has that plate there on the top, but it manages to be with a deeper base level as well. Let's actually take note of that there. Between the two of them, that PNY is going to push down on the SSD that little bit further down, but still only gaining in terms of height a mere few, like not even two millimeters there, which is still quite a lot significantly in the world of SSD. But in the way this is gonna be installed, this is clearly designed to live outside of that bay, but still not exposing it too much in terms of open air heat in the ambient environment, relying a lot more on those little holes there. There is of course the argument that it could be a pattern uh, difficulty there, because 
it would be foolish to think that Sir Brent, when they released this, wouldn't have at least gone to put a pattern on it in some way. They would have, let's face it, it's a very unique heat sink there. If they're going to go to the trouble of designing something like this, they may have gone ahead and tried to um, tie up the design of something like this. It wouldn't be the first time we've seen that in a lot of these things. So perhaps that's the reasoning. But still, nonetheless, I'm intrigued by this whole design here on the side here. Now, I talked about the base there. This is another very intriguing point for me here because this obviously arrives with the thermal pad pre-applied. So if we have a look there, there is our thermal pad there on the base. So we're going to remove that because we're going to install an SSD for our next video. And the first things that should hit you about it is one, this is a 22110 length SSD heatsink there. That's right, it's going to fill the entire occupiable bay of the PS5 there at the bottom. The holes there at the base there you can see correspond to different length SSDs there. So if you were down the line to get a larger SSD that was cracking outside of the traditional 2280 length and go to the longer ones for more storage, this is going to not only cover that whole thing in terms of the thermal pad, which is a full length thermal pad there, sorry about the lights going nuts, but on top of that, it's also tall. It's a very tall heatsink. And a lot of you, when you first talked, to, I first talked about the Sabrent here on the channel, were concerned about the level of contact this made with the SSD. And it does make contact with the SSD. We did an ink test. But nonetheless, I think a lot of you were wondering about just how much it made contact with it to assist that dissipation. I don't think anyone's really going to have that query with this one. It is quite a chunky one there. If anything, it's going to push down potentially, you know, quite a lot more on the SSD than others. So it's going to, I'm going to screw this in. I'm going to feel how much resistance goes in as I install this with the SSD inside. Again, we are going to be reusing that screw. There's the countersunk screw area there on the side. And again, there's not much more we can say about its physical nature there. I mean, what we're going to do now is have a little look there. We've got the SSD that we're going to be utilizing for our tests later on. So let's go ahead and get that installed inside. Um, again, when it comes to uh, the overall design of it, I've always you know, stated quite clearly that when I was looking at the Elec Gear heatsink before, um, I think it's very, very good. But I also think it's overkill um to quite a tremendous degree it's not the most overkill ssd i've used but it's definitely up there and i put a lot of weight of my own behind that sabrent there but i've got to say that is an impressive look for things and and i'm really intrigued by these holes here and definitely that chunky bit at the bottom so when we do our temp tests i'm going to keep a very close eye on that there so let's get that installed inside again installation of these are very very straightforward indeed Again, the SSD slides straight in there. We're going to be doing a whole series of independent tests with that XL R8 SSD that we're installing now, the 2TB um, CS3140. So we've got the SSD inside. So let's see if I can bring this close to the camera for you here. Again, it has the little lever there on the back, as one would expect. And we can just pop that into the lever area there, and it arches straight on. Now, it definitely sits higher than the Sabrent there. If we bring that up there, we can see just how much it's going there. If I bring that back up, I've already felt the adhesive thermal pad there touching the SSD. If we bring that Sabrent back in, so we can see how they compare, because I know a number of you are going to be basing comparisons on this. And we can see that the Sabrent certainly goes in there, but that PMY definitely sits higher between the two of them there. And I'm hoping the PS5 doesn't slide out of my hands and smash on the ground. But let's get that Sabrent out of there without ripping my fingernails off if we get that on there and it slots on very easily it's definitely a chunkier heatsink overall it sits on neatly and again not too much resistance it's definitely going on top of the ssd there you can kind of almost make out a slight spring there as i install it so let's get the screw inside again this is another one of those ssds that mean that you're not going to be utilizing the little cover there Let's get that on there. Get that installed. So again, lovely and straightforward stuff there. On a whim, I decided to try out that extra little screw that this arrives with here inside to see if it would also fit alongside the one that's included with the PS5. They're the same length there. Um, and it turns out that extra screw that they uh, include can be utilized inside the leverage area there. So again, if you are someone that has that screw there that's kind of fallen apart there, or it's kind of worn away at the top, that screw that they include is certainly more than capable of fitting in there. And it is a tight, nice fit there 
we bring that closer to there that is how this sits inside now if we bring this more to the front you can have a look how much of that drive you're going to see and as you can see immediately there there is certainly capture area there for the air that's going to be passing through that vent and into here so again we're going to be moving that through that device there the top of the ps5 certainly sits on easily put that on there as you can see the cover goes on and once again we'll bring that slightly closer to the camera and as you can see there inside you can just make out that heating there that little silver line there underneath there so it's not too exposing there and it definitely goes in nice and sweet i've got to say in terms of the overall design of this heatsink it's a nice easy straightforward installation it's what i would expect um, the look of the thing it's certainly um i think it's quite i'm not going to say it's hugely different to the sprint i'm not sure legally what the differences are between them but i will say straight away that first and foremost They've definitely gone their own way in terms of the physical height of the drive. I'll also say that in terms of contact with the SSD, I've removed that screw there. And if we have a look inside there, let's see how easy that heatsink comes off. That heatsink is pretty adhesively attached to that SSD there without that screw inside. So it is definitely sticking quite hard against that SSD, as you can see. Let's move that there onto the table get that there on camera for you guys um but overall i things i like about this heating first and foremost i really like the height i know a number of you have been very very concerned about the height of heat sinks having sufficient contact with the ssd i like both the height and the length of this i like that the m2 th um, thermal pad is pre-attached in advance i don't know why they haven't included another one i know there is a kind of back and forth about utilizing um, a second thermal pad underneath an ssd on the one hand it's not always necessary because the chips that live on the base of these ssds are generally nand and they're okay to get a little bit warm it's only really the controller that brains chip there on the top um where it, you know you want to dissipate as much heat as possible so you don't necessarily need a thermal pad underneath but i I would have liked to have at least seen an additional thermal pad attached there. Once again, in terms of contact, I'm going to once again highlight, if you look very carefully there, I'm going to try and get there so the lights in this studio aren't going to completely ruin this. You should be able to see a small black circle here at the top. That is the screw there of the SSD inside there making contact with this. So not even just the SSD, that is the screw that's lower than the ssd that is a good sufficient amount of contact that this thermal pad is having with the ssd inside there so again really good job in terms of contact with the ssd and of course the fact that it's 22110 uh, length there which is also nice to see uh, there are apparently going to be bundles out there as well so if you were considering the xl r8 ssd anyway the cs3140 or 3040s then it seems a no-brainer not to go for the bundle deal that's going to have this pre-included because realistically at the one or two tb level they'll probably throw this in for free in a few months from now as an added incentive all the brands are going to end up doing that anyway i think sabrent already does it in the two and the four tb as it stands um it's a good weight it's definitely a good weight there overall between the two of them it feels like it weighs almost twice the weight of the Sabrent. How that translates in terms of overall use, and I think a lot of that weight there is in that top panel between the two of them there. It's definitely a chunkier heat panel there at the top, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how that looks in terms of heat dissipation overall. Price point-wise, it's still you know, a premium SSD heatsink, so it's not the cheapest, but I will go as far as to say that if you are looking for a realistic and long-term storage um, uh, heatsink there, when you look at those budget heatsinks that I mentioned at $10 or $15, the idea of spending $25 to $30 max on a heatsink isn't that crazy when you want to make sure that your heatsink lasts for a long time and dissipates that heat. And again, we will be looking using our uh, temperature device about the internal and surrounding heat that's generated when this device is in operation. But overall... I like what I'm seeing. I'm not going to give a full judgment until I do my temp test, but I will say that right now, of all of the heat sinks that I've tested thus far, this looks like it's easily going to be, if not top one, then top two, or definitely on the podium. So it's going to be interesting to see overall. And in terms of design, it just looks lovely. And again, I'm thinking an F1 brake pedal here at this point. 
But stay tuned for the temperature testing of this. The only reason I've not included it in this video is that's going to take a good few days to do that. And I'd rather let you guys know about the design as soon as I can to get those temp tests out there. Let me know what you guys think. Are you intrigued by this? Let me know. Again, if you've enjoyed this video, click like. There's a full do, uh, full review over on NAS Compare. So I'm going to be adding all of the temp results as they become, uh, as the testing happens down there in the article. So even if the video of the temp test isn't live yet, they may already be down there. So do check that out. Do click uh, subscribe if you want to stay informed and know about all this subject as we go through the whole world of data storage in 2022. And of course, there's the free advice section over on NAS Compares if you're looking for the right data storage solution for you, be it for PS5, be it NAS, NAS, Thunderbolt, or more. It's two dudes helping you completely for free. Me, Eddie the Web Guy, we answer as many inquiries as we can. Genuinely free, there's a donate button. Use it, ignore it, it's up to you. We do nothing with your email. What are we going to do with it for the Lord's sake? We're too busy. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.